the uh, large intestine or colon quite simply is the prototype or mother of all classical uh, GI histology models because it has all four layers and it has them nicely and classically. Note that this was probably a piece of uh, colon or large bowel which was cut longitudinally with respect to its axis rather than cross-section because the inner circular uh, muscle fibers look like they have round nuclei and the longitudinal look like they're rather spindly. If this was cut on cross-section, it would be the other way around. Uh, notice that what we have here, when I spoke of classical four layers, is a mucosa composed of glands and intervening uh, connective tissue called lamina propria, which is then quite abruptly delineated from the underlying submucosa, which is all this loose vascular and fatty connective tissue, by a muscularis mucosa. But then you have your regular old muscularis, or some people might call this media, but that's more uh, a term reserved for blood vessels, so we'll call this just the muscularis. Two types of fibers, inner circular, outer longitudinal. And then a lot of loose fatty connective tissue external to that. If there was enough of this cut and they hadn't trimmed off the fat, you would then have to decide whether this uh, colon was uh, intraperitoneal or uh, retroperitoneal. If it was intraperitoneal, and you could see it and touch it and feel it when you're in the abdominal cavity, you would see mesothelial cells uh, lining the outermost layers. But because it's been cut, you don't know. So you don't know whether you want to call this a serosa or an adventitia, and I don't know what to call it either. But let's go a little bit on higher power now and just go through the four layers again. Here is the mucosa. Notice the mucosa does not form really papillary structures where you have finger-like projections on the outside. Rather than that, the glands go inward to form these gastric pits. Notice that in the uh, lamina propria and submucosa, it is quite common to find lymphoid follicles. This is a secondary lymphoid follicle because it has an inner germinal center. Notice then you have a, quite an abundant amount of loose connective tissue, uh, fat. Here is an artery, here is a vein, here are arteries and veins. Here's regular old connective tissue with veins. Here's chiefly fat. Here's a muscularis mucosa. Here is lamina propria. Here is surface epithelium. And here is epithelium of the uh, gastric, the invaginating gastric, I'm sorry, colonic glands, which are also called CRIPS, C-R-Y-P-T-S. Notice, once again, you have another quite abrupt transition, and you can now see the beginning of your smooth muscle layers, circular on the inside, longitudinal on the outside. It is between the uh, circular and longitudinal layer that you're very, very likely to find little ganglion cells like here and here and here. This is the myenteric ganglion of the uh, gastrointestinal system. And that's where these are found. They're quite common. Another place to find uh, ganglia, almost like a separate brain of the GI system, is in the, uh, whoops, let's go back to that. These are uh, nerve cells of the myenteric plexus. Notice that there's another area which you may find uh, ganglion cells, and it will be uh, in the submucosa. And they're a little bit harder to find, but if you are patient, you can probably find some. And do we have one here or not? Looks like, Yeah, here we go, we're lucky. We found a submucosal uh, ganglion as well, part of the uh, autonomic nervous system of the colon. There's a submucosal ganglion. Uh, and we found just about everything we wanted to find. 
Would you like to review it again real quick? Sure, let's do it. It'll just take a second. Surface epithelium, colonic crypts, lamina propria between them, uh, lymphoid tissue in the mucosa, a thin band of muscle called the muscularis mucosae, a thick spongy collection of uh, arteries, veins, fat, and we even saw that one submucosal plexus called submucosa, circular layer, longitudinal layer, myenteric plexus between the two layers, and then the rather loose connective tissue of the outside, which if this had uh, actual mesothelium, which we could identify, would then qualify it for being serosa or peritoneum. Otherwise, you just have to call this loose connective tissue adventitia, primarily fat, loose connective tissue. There's a little blood vessel. And uh, I thank you very much.